Unified into a modern nation-state in 1871, Germany is a powerhouse of a country. But what is its genetic history and what haplogroups are common amongst German people today? Now, Germany is home to over 80 million people, with many people around the world also having German ancestry, including in the US, Canada, Brazil and Argentina. It is made up of 16 different states, from Bavaria in the south to Hamburg in the north, with Saxony and Berlin in the east. But what about its genetic history? Well, let's start at the beginning and look at the key events that shaped the early foundation, the genetic foundation of Germany and Germanic peoples more broadly. In general, three main events were critical in this, in forming the ancient genetic bedrock of Germany and Europe more broadly. Firstly, Western hunter-gatherers. Secondly, Anatolian Neolithic farmers who migrated into Europe. And thirdly, the introduction of steppe ancestry during the Bronze Age due to migrations from the Pontic Caspian steppe associated with the Yamnaya culture, with the ability to digest milk potentially brought into many parts of Europe with this migration. The Yamnaya were also a tall people, which was probably related to their high protein diets. Now, I should note the various archaeological cultures of Europe that at least included parts of ancient Germany interacted and grew out of these migrations of the first farmers and the Yamnaya. Although there are far, far, far too many of them to go through in this video, a few to note include the linear pottery culture that flourished in Central Europe around 7,000 years ago and it is associated with the early farmers of Germany and Central Europe more broadly. DNA analysis of a 7,000 year old woman from Stuttgart, Germany revealed she had the mitochondrial haplogroup T2, which was typical of Neolithic Europeans, and she very likely had dark hair and brown eyes, with this eye colour a signal of her Anatolian farmer ancestry, as Western hunter gatherers largely had blue eyes. Next is the corded wear culture that is dated from 3000 BC to 2350 BC, and it's connected to the Yamnaya culture and steppe ancestry, but these people were also related to the earlier people of ancient Germany. The Y-DNA haplogroup, R1A, was common amongst the Corded Ware people. Although the origins of R1A is debated, it may be connected to the Yamnaya. Some Corded Ware people did carry the R1B haplogroup though, which we are more certain was brought into Europe due to migrations from the steppe. A connected people to the Corded Ware culture was the Bellbeaker complex, which probably initially arose in Iberia before moving into parts of, of ancient Germany and Central Europe in general. Their expansion is associated with the spread of lighter eyes and hair colour. The Bellbeakers existed in Europe from 2800 BC to 2300 BC, where it was replaced by the unitized culture. Bellbeaker DNA haplogroups were dominated by R1B M269, a strong signal of the steppe ancestry. A later complex of ancient Germany was the Urnfield culture, which existed from 1300 to 750 BC. Analysis of an Urnfield man from around 1000 BC revealed he had the paternal haplogroup R1A1A, 1B1A2, and the maternal haplogroup H23. A final culture I will note is the Hallstatt complex, which flourished from 1200 to 450 BC. It takes its name from Hallstatt in Austria, but its influence extended into Germany as well. Analysis of Hallstatt Y chromosome haplogroups found that they were mainly R1B or G2A, with one 2024 study published in Nature of Human Behaviour finding that individuals with haplogroup G2A L497 exhibit significantly more Southern European ancestry than individuals carrying the haplogroup R1B M269. So there was this Southern European component as well. Now this is just a very brief overview of some of the main archaeological cultures that affected the, the history of ancient Germany, but if I went through them all, we would be here for the next 10,000 years. But this gives us a general overview, and as we can see during the Bronze Age, this step ancestry component was introduced into Germany, with the R1B Hartwell group being introduced. However, this step component was not the only influence on ancient Germany. Now let's skip forward and look at another fascinating period in the genetic history of Germany around the collapse of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century AD. This period is often referred to as the Migration Period, as large parts of Europe were transformed by invasions and migrations by various forces, including the Goths, the Franks, the Anglo-Saxons, the Vandals and the Huns. Although these people had an impact on various different parts of Europe, the Anglo-Saxons on England for instance, in this video I really want to concentrate on the internal genetic history of Germany as opposed to the influence and any external impact Germanic tribes had on different parts of Europe. 
I should also note as well that many origin stories of these Germanic peoples or some of these Germanic peoples, such as the Goths, mention Scandinavia as one of their origins. And we can still see this link today between Scandinavia and Germany, with people in Scandinavia speaking Germanic languages, as well as English of course also being a Germanic language, thanks to the Anglo-Saxons. But what do we know about the genetics of ancient Germany around the collapse of the Western and Roman Empire? Well, a really interesting study published in 2018 looked at 41 graves from different archaeological sites in Bavaria and southern Germany that were all dated to around 500 AD. One of the key findings was that there was a female bias migration into Bavaria around this time who brought Southeast European ancestry and even some East Asian ancestry with them. There is much more to the story, however. When the study analysed the skulls of these women with this diverse ancestry, they found that these skulls had been deliberately elongated, as they write. Artificial cranial deformation, or ACD, which is only possible during early childhood, is a deliberate and permanent shaping of the head performed with great effort. In some societies, reshaping the human skull has been seen as an ideal of beauty, but it may also have acted as a marker of status, nobility, or affiliation to a certain class or group. While ACD is a worldwide phenomenon that was practiced at least up until the 20th century, during the late Roman and early medieval period in Europe, it is most popularly associated with the Huns, an ambiguously defined nomadic group thought to have migrated into Europe from Asia. However, the earliest evidence for ACD appears in Europe in 2nd century AD burials in present-day Romania that predate the proposed Hunnic invasions. The authors continue, the most striking result of this study is the genetic difference between early medieval individuals buried in Bavaria with and without ACD. While both males and females with normal skulls were found to be a largely homogeneous set of individuals with a common northern central European ancestry, with only two exceptions, females with deformed skulls sampled from the same cemeteries were very genetically diverse, demonstrating a wide range of both modern and northern central and southern and southeastern European ancestry, and even some samples with East Asian ancestry. This study went on to note that the introduction of these females may have been part of a strategy to form alliances with entities to the east. These entities may have just been tribes of southeastern Europe, or it may be connected to the Huns, and this would explain the East Asian ancestry. Others argue it was simply a migration of women from southeastern Europe and just happened to practice this custom of elongating skulls, but it's fascinating regardless. This study also touched on any potential Roman influence on Bavaria. Although the sample size was really small, just looking at one Roman soldier who lived in the same area around 200 years earlier, they found that no local individual was found to share recent common genetic ancestry with this individual with the Roman of Southwest European origin. The results, although again only based on one sample, which is very small, argue against significant admixture between any Roman populations from most southern parts of the former Roman Empire and our individuals buried in Bavaria around 500 AD. But what about haplogroups at this time? Well, the mitochondrial DNA, which is all down the maternal line, from these individuals from ancient Bavaria were clads U4, U5A, U5B, WXJI, H, HV, T1, T2, K, and C. With the study noting that these haplogroups are not uncommon amongst modern Central Europeans outside of the C clad. This study also looked at hair and eye colour, with those individuals with elongated skulls having higher rates of brown eyes and brown hair, a sign of their southeastern European ancestry, whereas individuals without the skull elongation had higher rates of blue eyes and blonde hair. Now, before moving on to look at the haplogroups of modern Germans, I should touch on another really interesting aspect of German history, the House of Habsburg, one of the most powerful dynasties in European history. The Habsburgs continually occupied the throne of the Holy Roman Empire for hundreds of years, an empire that existed in the heart of Europe for around 1,000 years until the early 19th century. Recent genetic analysis of the Habsburg family has confirmed that the distinct Habsburg jaw was likely the result of close interbreeding within the family and a bid to keep bloodlines tight. And speaking of royal lines, if your ancestry has deep German or French roots, there is a chance that you are related to Charlemagne, the king of the Franks amongst other titles, from 768 to 814 AD, who had around 20 children. It seems as well that the Y-DNA haplogroup, R1B U106, was the most common one amongst the Franks. But what haplogroups are common in Germany today? Well, the Y-DNA haplogroups in Germany are quite mixed, but they include I1, I2, E1B1B, R1A1A, R1B P312, and R1B U106, with this last haplogroup, R1B U106, particularly associated with Germanic peoples in general down through history, like the Franks as noted earlier. 
On the maternal side, there is again a mixture of numerous mitochondrial haplogroups, but H is the most common in Germany today, with other notable mentions including J, U5 and T2. Now this is obviously a massive topic, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and any areas you found particularly interesting, any areas I may have missed, uh, and any areas you would like to find a wee bit more information on. Speaking of genetic histories, what is the genetic history of Spain, and what role did the Visigoths play in its genetic history? To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell, and I'll see you next time.